I say, chaps, I have found the perfect way of cooking food as you are traveling up to the space station. Hello guys, I'm Orbeta, your Welsh engineer, and welcome to the LSS, the Large Space Station Part 3, Station Life. Kerbal Space Program! Oh, I'm just reading it. <laughs> well, welcome back. And first thing, first launch we gotta do is we have to add some communication to our space station. Now, as we're doing that, perhaps I can look up stats on what they use on the space station. Now, I concentrate more on the internet the space station because obviously they have an internet and it's not perfect because they have to have used satellite communication obviously I don't think they have direct communication to the ground unless they're flying over the space center or whatever but I had a rate up on their best speeds is about 10 megabytes per second or megabits per second down and 3 megabits per second up that's pretty good that is really good considering all the you know that most internets are a lot less than that in urban areas around the US, UK and other countries. And that's just because of the long distance like wires. Wires have been changed for fiber optics and stuff like that. So you have problems drop off. Uh, infrastructure not being, you know, maintained. Whether it's in space, you need to keep on maintaining that because, ah, mother de hell. You don't want to leave the astronauts up there without any communications to you. Also, I was reading up on the communication systems and they use quite a variety of communication systems, most notably UHF, ultra, uh, no, v, yeah, UHF, ultra high frequency, and they use very high frequency, which is VHF for all the non technical people. And yes, I mounted my communications by slamming it into the site, and <laughs> I think that would be a mistake because they would let out a lot of air by there. But I thought that would be a perfect place to put it in the center of the space station, where you would need it where all everyone would be living. But the International Space Station itself uses quite a variety of communication systems. They use something called a KU band, used for audio, video, and data systems, which I assume is digital. They use very high frequency and ultra high frequencies communication with ground and even close proximity EVAs. And also, they have been using laser communications, which is quite effective if you think in space, because you don't have atmospheric distortions, which would cause problems. Well, anyway, let's talk about what else, pro what other problems they have with space travel. Or really, I mean, life on the space station. One of the things they have to think about is loss of bone mass, muscle mass, because of the low gravity. So they use exercise systems on the space station. Life on the space station is a bit more complex. You could say it's a bit more uh, in depth. You have to think about everything you're doing from just brushing your teeth. You have to make sure you, you add just a bit of water on a toothbrush, a tiny bit of toothpaste, because on earth we use too much toothpaste on our toothbrushes. And then you have to use that to clean your teeth, you have to clean your brush off. You have, I suppose not many people do that here on Earth properly. You just swill it under the tap, give it a shake off, put it back in the pot, and then you find like a load of gunge in the bottom of the pot later on as everything runs down the toothbrush. Yes, not very cycle. One important factor, though, on the space station I have to mention, and that this is where I'm docking here. You can see I've got nuclear generators on it. That's meant to represent using a fusion to sort of like create water out of hydrogen and oxygen sort of thing exactly what they do on a submarine because it's a i'm not sure it's a technique employed on the international space station because they have filtration systems obviously they have to send up water they uh filter up 95 or 90 percent of their water but yes yeah, so you take a pee you can have some fresh water later on. <laughs> it's not something good to think about. Talking about toilets, I don't think I've added a toilet to the space station. I think we'll do that next. And so here we are. We are launching our toilet into outer space. And not once too late because we have several Kerbals on here busting for the clue. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going to make this out outhouse. Oh, that's what I should have done. I should have added a a door with a, you know, which would open and then you have a pilot seat on there which they could sit on. I think that would have been cool. So they'd have an outhouse on the space station. You'd have to go on EVA 
to take a crap. <laughs> anyway, but what this is meant to be is a toilet system. It'd be I'd have it away from the main station. Perhaps you really would have it in the living quarters. What happens to the stuff when it's flushed away? No, it's not flushed into space. That would be stupid. It doesn't drop down to Earth. No, it'd be in the same orbit of the space station because the space station is travel at speed. Any poo which is left to the space station would travel at the same speed. And so that has to be bagged. I'm not sure if, like, if anybody's watched The Martian, if it is bagged and vacuum sealed and then returned. Perhaps it's studied by someone, perhaps or fertilized or something <laughs> used for fertilizing crops i don't know probably not but probably studied you know making sure the diets of the astronauts are healthy hmm anyway after the return of that craft i had to think about what we're going to do next but first off i think someone needs to lose so switch the lights on to show it's occupied <laughs> and the next module Okay, I couldn't think of what else to launch to the space station, and I thought I'd keep this episode simple. As you can see, we've got triangle shapes on the top. Yes, this is the pizza delivery craft. I realized what I haven't done in all my mission is sent off a sort of like a delivery system, and I haven't done that in my main Kerbal Space Program series, which is Kerbal Quest. And oh dear, what happens when things go wrong? Do you save the pizza? Normally, they would be self-destruct, but I think this pizza is so precious, we'll have to save it. And make sure it's returned safely. By the way, this pizza is uncooked, and I'll explain why when we go launch it up again. You've probably have seen it in the beginning of the video. I'll probably add it as the for, for introduction clip. Anyway, after solving the problems, the problems I had with this launch, and perhaps I'll do a video on this, I was losing control because I put a smaller rocket on the top of a larger rocket. What I decided here was to add... So I used the tweak scale mod on the bottom of the rocket. Uh, well, just to make it all the rocket in all the entire same size. Because I don't want to make a huge rocket. And yes, I lose control. And this is where things get hairy. I should have disabled the ascent guidance and took manual control of it. We're still too low in the aperture, Captain. We need to go a bit higher. Although I believe we may make it. Oh, but we really have low delta V. Will we make it? Will we make it into space? And the heat is coming up. I think I found a way of cooking the pizza while we send it up and out to the atmosphere. <laughs> Just stay really low. Heat the spacecraft up. Make sure the pizza is piled on the side of the spacecraft so it heats up. And don't forget to do some twirling to heat up this, all sides of this spacecraft. Oh man, I don't know why I left this in. It was a mad launch, but I thought it was cool because it actually does make it into orbit. In a sense as well, talking about food, you have to give an appreciation to the astronauts because they can't do things normally. They can't cook their own food. You know, everything's vacuum packed. You have to add water. So they don't have the normal things that you and I have, we take for granted. Like, if I'm hungry, I can go downstairs, open a pack of crisps. They can't do that. They have to keep themselves healthy as well, because, as I said, mo uh, muscle loss, bone loss, keep themselves alert. And it's not just food as well, it's things like lighting. Now, I've worked in a place where there's no windows and you can't see the sun or anything. So, you, you know, you've just got the lights, and you do get a bit down from it, I suppose, because the sunlight seems to have a profound effect on the human mind, where, you know, it's, I think it's seasonal disorder syndrome thingamajiggy. <laughs> that's, the, that's the technical term for it. But, yeah, they've discovered that the astronauts weren't sleeping properly, they were taking sleeping pills. I think I explained this before. But what they've done, they've added lights throughout the space station and they change the colors going through the day. And it's not as if they can see the sun all the time because there's only a couple windows. Because in guys in space, it's a vacuum. If you lose pressure in that can, you're dead. And I think they limit the amount of windows because having bulletproof windows which can sustain you know, an impact at 
10 times the speed of a bullet, I think you need very thick and expensive glass. That is why there's like only a couple of windows on the space station. Anyway, now they have their pizza. Now they have their toilet so they can deposit their inventory after consuming the pizza. We shall return the spacecraft for reuse, for reheating. And perhaps they've added a, added the number twos and they send it down in the spacecraft now being cooked, ready for experiments or consumption. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Ooh, it's the poo. Although I've have seen monkeys eat their poo. I'm surprised they survived though, re-entry. Because you see, I seem to have a... The decoupler stuck to the bottom of this. And also, the decoupler seems to be stuck to the bottom of this. Held on by the atmosphere and the motion of our spacecraft. I don't know where it's going with that. I'll leave it in that recorded anyway. It's time to deploy our parachutes and I think... Oops, Daisy. We do not have a control probe on you. Do not have a Kerbal or any way to deploy the chutes. Um, I keep on trying all the way down, but I don't think we're going to do it. Not without something to control it. I have to rethink this up. Anyway, I've decided in the next Day Station episode, or I might do it a different episode, different sort of series, I don't know. We'll build advanced space stations. What would the future space station be like? And whatnot. And damn, we lost the astronauts' inventory. <laughs> but the pizza's packs, their slices survived and they couldn't matter. <laughs> anyway, I'm Orbiter. Trust me, I'm an engineer. And I'll see you next time.